This morning's sermon, I want to talk a little bit about, are you cursed? Many people feel that we're cursed. Many people take on curses, and there's two different, different kinds of curses. But before we get started, let's get the record straight, because the devil is always trying to tell Christians that they're not good enough. Try to tell Christians that they need to do something better, or they've not done enough. And then they say, well, you're living under this curse. Well, I'm going to tell you something. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are living under a curse. But Jesus broke the curse on that cross. I want you to open up your Bibles to Romans chapter 8, verse 1. It's on page 1737 of your pew Bible. And I really want you to look at this because this is a defense mechanism when you are attacked. This is a verse that you should have memorized when you're attacked or when you start feeling the attack of the dark one. Or when your friends and your family members or other people start putting you down. You know, I've said many times, people come and say, well, I know what you did. I said, fine, yes you do, that's great. Do you want to know where that's at? It's been nailed to a cross. And all you have to do is go to that cross. And God will show it to you. See, all of my sins and everything that I have ever done does not keep me bound, and therefore I am not cursed. Look at verse 1. Therefore, there is therefore now, what does it say? No condemnation to those who are in Christ who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life is Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. But now, understand what the words are saying. You are not under condemnation to those who are what? In Christ Jesus. You have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And many Christians today are doubting their walk. They're doubting their faith because the world is saying, well, there's other ways. There's pastors that are preaching there are many ways to heaven. There are pastors today that are preaching that parts of the Bible don't even, it's not even true. There's a Bible church in, uh, in, in Richmond, Virginia that is saying that we need to find a new Bible because there's too many errors in the Bible that we have. So how do I know what is happening? When you come under those teachings, you're coming under a curse. You have to understand that the curse is of the world and not of Christ. Are you cursed? Can you be cursed? Many people ask, why do bad things happen to me? Why is things happening that doesn't happen? You know what? You know, my finances are are low. Have you ever noticed when you have financial trouble, everything goes wrong? Your car breaks down, air conditioner breaks, you know, everything starts breaking. And you start going, man, is is, is somebody put a curse on me? Years ago, my wife had a little jewelry store at a flea market. And there was this lady across the aisle that put a curse on Tina. I mean, we're talking about the crazy curses, okay? They even had a voodoo doll with putting the stings on her. And then they had all this other chemicals and all this type of stuff. You know, that poor woman, she didn't understand that she was not coming against Tina, my wife, but she was coming against the one that protects her, Jesus Christ. But there's a lot of questions that we face time to time. Can we be cursed? Can that lady actually put a curse on us? Well, when tragedy disrupts occurs in our lives, sometimes it's natural types of we try to explain what's going on. Maybe I can't do what I have to do. Maybe I didn't get my promotion that I should have gotten. You know, you know how it is? You know, I was just back there talking and uh, we're talking about, uh, about Bob, Katie, and how good he was. And the comment was, you know why he's so successful and good? Because he listens to his wife. <laughs> I 
Now, that didn't come from me. That came from somebody in the congregation. The whole point is, is, you see, people recognize when you're blessed. And we find excuses for blessings and cursing. But sometimes it's just being obedient to God. Tragedy comes in our lives, and we look for explanations. And there's reasons because of negative consequences. One popular answer and a press events in terms that I heard many times, you know, people come, why did I lose my job? Am I cursed? You know, why am I not getting something better? Am I cursed? You know, why isn't my fields producing as much as others? Am I cursed? The old saying, you know, the old saying they have saying that's, you know, everything's greener on the other side of the fence. And people start looking and says, what am I doing wrong? Why did my marriage break up? Why am I having marriage problems? Is there a curse that was put on my family? Have I done something to bring a curse? Why did the illness or diagnosis event? You know, I heard stories. I talk to people when they hear the word cancer, the big C. Their life gets devastated, especially if it's a cancer that's non-operable. And they start wondering, did someone put a curse on me? Am I cursed? Sadly, though, even in the church, many people still believe that they can be cursed. Many believe that the blessings of faith can be undone by a spiritual curse, that there, what Christ did was not good enough. Once I read a book claimed, if you've got the fruit, you've got the root. In other words, if you can point to something that suggests a curse has visited you, then it must be reality. If you believe you are cursed, you really need to come back to Romans 8.1 and really read it and understand what the Word of God is telling you. Now, some people say, well, you know, I get upset sometimes with things. Don't get with what is said from the pulpit. Don't get conviction mixed up with condemnation. Condemnation means you've got been cursed and you are cursed. You've been condemned. That's what a curse brings, is condemnation. A Christian cannot be condemned. He can be convicted of their sins and repent, but he cannot be condemned. There is no condemnation found in, in one that who is, is with Christ. So what is the biblical understanding? Can a Christian be cursed? If a follower of Jesus Christ, can he be cursed? And does this mean that they still are under the attack of the enemy? If you believe that you are cursed, you need to get to the cross. You need to get under the blood of Jesus. And if you're saying that I am cursed and I'm carrying a curse, that means you're saying that you're still under the dominion of this world that you're still under the dominion of the devil, then therefore you don't understand the cross. You've been broken from that dominion. Who's more powerful here, Jesus or the devil? Jesus is. And if Jesus says you're covered by your blood and God will remember your sins no longer, how can then you believe the devil? You know, it's like Adam and Eve walking in the garden in the presence of God. And the devil says, it's okay, just eat of that fruit. Can you imagine walking with God and then this little serpent, little devil comes up and says, yeah, man, you should eat that. You know, it reminds me back at my house when someone was there and my mother-in-law sat there and she says, oh, yeah, this is bean taste, paste, taste it. And somebody in our congregation gets a big old spoonful, sticks it in his mouth, and oops, did not like it. He didn't even bother. And that's what the devil does. Whatever he shows you, and you taste it, it may look good, it may sound good, it may even sound logical, but once you consume it, it makes you sick, even if you don't realize it. Once you start consuming the lies of the devil and you allow it into your heart, 
what you're doing is you're pushing the Holy Spirit out to satisfy the flesh. And we do that by how we act. Are you covered by the blood? Can you be cursed and placed under the one that's under the blanket of Christ, redemptive love? No, you can't. No true Christian, he cannot or she cannot be cursed. Now, the devil will try to get on your shoulders and get you out from the umbrella and the covering of God for you to do something and entice you like, like Eve, eat of this fruit. Do this. I told you this many times I was in Panama when my wife was here in the States. I was stationed in Panama. We went to the beach. A friend of mine said, ah, come on, man. I said, I don't really want to go to the beach. Now let's go. And I said, I said, well, Lord, you know, protect my mind. And the devil immediately started to attack. Going to the beach, it was a jeep, bunch of girls, top down, top almost off, saying, come with us. And I'm going, are you serious? And then I remember what a pastor told me one day. Whenever the devil starts attacking your mind, don't go on the defense. We always go on the defense. You know, I remember many times the devil comes, in the name of Jesus, by the blood that was shed on Calvary, Lord, take these thoughts out of my mind. Lord, cover my thoughts, cover my eyes, cover my ears. Lord, take these thoughts, Lord. I don't want to have these thoughts in my mind. Lord, I claim the blood. I plead the blood. Five minutes later, there's a girl halfway naked looking at me. I'm going, what the? And the pastor told me, he says, quit going on the defense. Go on the offense. And then I start praying. Say, okay, devil, you want to play? In the name of Jesus, Lord, everybody in that house, let them be touched by the Holy Spirit. Lord, that church right now, let it be filled. Let everybody come. Lord, let these places be full and let God reign supreme in their lives. Lord, that house right now, that couple, Lord, let's send somebody with the Holy Spirit. Devil, you want to keep attacking? I can attack. I show up on the beach. Panama has no topless beaches. That one was. And I go, are you serious? I said, fine. In the name of Jesus, Lord, that young lady right there, touch her with your Holy Spirit. Move on her. It wasn't five minutes. The police were there and ran them all off the beach. Because, you see, he cannot curse me. He cannot have authority in me. I don't have to play defense. I go on the offense because my God is greater than his God. I can defeat the devil. All I need to do is get under the blanket, under the power of the Holy Spirit. Curses cannot affect me because I'm sanctified. I'm not perfect. None of us are. We all have mistakes. But you know what? Jesus says, you are worth my life. And Jesus has sanctified us. So we put on Jesus. You know, people talking about how Jesus was. Well, you think Jesus was a little wimp? You know, the, the Christians today think this Jesus was a little guy wearing sandals, a hippie that just went around, love everybody, love everybody. I mean, he was a man that came and destroyed the Pharisees. He says, you hypocrite, you vipers. Walked into the temple and tore the bridge, temp, turned tables over. Can you imagine a poor carpenter from Nazareth walking in to the temple of God and attacking those crooked pastors and priests and pe preachers? That's what Jesus was a man. I mean, if he was here today, he'd be in the Army Special Forces, okay? He wouldn't be on the, in the Navy SEAL team. <laughs> Curses cannot affect us. So what is cursing? Scripture uses the language of cursing in two separate ways. There's one different, there's a verbal curse and a spiritual curse. 
A verbal curse is to speak ill of someone, to use words to tear them down and dehumanize the person. Verbal telling buddy how they are, what they are. To curse your father and your mother, for example, Matthew 15, 4, we read that in the devotion, is to speak desperately, talk negatively about your parents. I'm going to tell you something. I told my boys this. I remember one time Jimmy and Johnny came up. I don't know how big they were. They said, Dad, Mom yelled at me. And I said, yeah. Well, Mom, Dad, I didn't do anything wrong. I said, I don't care. He says, well, it ain't fair. I said, it doesn't matter. She's your mother and you will respect it. Why? Because the Bible tells me if I curse my parents, I'm cursed. And if I can't be cursed, but yet then I can curse, I can disrespect my parents, then something has to give. I can't have it both ways. I can't say I'm covered by the blood, but curse my parents. If you are starting to curse your parents, then you're not covered by the blood. Your parents don't have to earn your respect. They get your respect. Cursing among may, may result pain. Sadly, we all be... We all have the recipients of verbal abuse. We've all been yelled at, cursed at, screamed at. But you know, it hurts to receive that type of cursing, especially when it comes from loved ones. Especially when loved ones tell you you're not worthy. You know, how many parents yell at their kids? I told a parent one day, he says, oh, you're just stupid. I said, why do you do that? Why are you going to curse your child? Why are you going to put these verbal words against your children? Against the youth? We do it all the time. Well, this generation is lost. How many of you heard that? What have we just said? We've just cursed this generation. This generation is lost, and they need Jesus, and we need to reach them so that they can know the blood of Christ. We don't need to curse our nation. Our nation says, well, we're not blessed. I I get mad at our nation with the stupid laws they pass. I'm sorry. Homosexuality is a sickness. Transgender, when you want to mutilate a 10-year-old, the Detroit Tigers, all you fans, they're putting money into paying for minors to have transgender operations. How's this happened? One, the church has cursed this country. We used our words to tear it down instead of build it up. We voted based upon our pocketbook and not our morals. Matter of fact, I remember one person told me they voted for one individual. And I said, why'd you vote for them? And it was Bill Clinton. And she comes in, she goes, man, he was cute. (laughs) And another person said they were voting for Sarah Palin. I said, why are you voting for Sarah Palin? Is Man, she's eye candy. So so you're going to put this nation with people in power based upon the looks? Isn't that the world? When Jesus calls his followers to bless those who curse you, he is, this is what he's praying what he's telling you to do is not bless those that put a spiritual curse but sp- it, that pe- speak a, sp- a spoken curse against you you know I remember years ago out here in, out here in front of Main Street and uh, I remember that, you remember that center lane 
you couldn't turn left in that center lane. You had to come in. And you, it was weird. Well, anyway, I just got here, and I, I missed my turn off to the firehouse, so I was going to just take a left there on, on Miami Street. So I got in that middle lane, had my turn signal on, and the guy over there yelling and cussing me, giving me, uh, telling me how old he was by the one finger, by one age. And I'm sitting there, what is your problem? And then when I make my turn, I, then I come back the next day. I said, why is this guy so upset with me? And I realized that that was not a turning lane. But he was cursing me. And the Bible here says, bless those that curse. And what did Jim Loft do, a pastor? You're an idiot. Instead of saying, you know what, bless them, touch them, Lord, fill them, forgive them. But how do we react? We respond to words that tear us down and destroy us, you know, but we need to have words that heal us and build us up. The scripture, however, also speaks of cursing and spiritual force and condemnations or death. When Jesus cursed the fig tree, remember that story? Because it did not produce fruit, it immediately withered. And it also tells us Christians, if we're not producing fruit, what are we doing? Cursing is the instance of no matter of words alone, but an expression of a spiritual power and authority. And that's the curse that I really want to talk about. The spiritual power and authority. To be cursed is to be spiritually affected in some negative way by a spiritual power. When people speak about being cursed, it is the latter form of cursing that they're speaking of. They fear they are under a spiritual force of condemnation. What I say earlier, can a Christian be condemned? No. The person who sees him or herself as a curse believes that the spiritual force has tainted them and works negatively upon them. Such cursing is such as keeps the individual it keeps you from experiencing what Christ and the blessing that he has for you. You would have to believe in the curse, allow the curse for it to affect you. You are above that and no spiritual forces of darkness can come to a Christian when you have the Holy Spirit living in you. Why fear them? Actually, if somebody tries to put a spiritual curse on you, you should feel sorry for them. It'd be like little Jackson thinking that he can take me down. Little Jackson's about this big. Okay? And when the demons that come after you is like a little guy about this big trying to take you down. Compare a demon to Christ. Could Jackson take me down? He could kick me, he could kick me in the shins. It hurt. You know, I love these movies where a 98-pound girl is picking up and throwing a 250-pound man around. But see, that's how we see the spiritual forces. When that spiritual force comes against you, it's like that. It's like a 50-pound little kid trying to pick a 200-pound man and throw him around. You know, why do we fall for it? Christ is feared. Christ is broken when we allow the devil, to come in and break us. Biblically speaking, a spiritual curse is an impossibility for a Christian person. And if you feel you're cursed, you can break that by, oh, very simple, by accepting Jesus Christ into your life and surrendering it to Christ, surrendering it to Him. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No evil shall befall me. No negative words will come against me. So say God in the book of Psalms and Isaiah. Paul reminds us that we are filled in him who is the, the head of all authority. The devil does not have the authority to come into your home, to come into your life, unless you allow him to come. 
There is no spiritual power that can rival Christ's lordship. Curses are under God's authority. Does the Bible speak of spiritual curses? Absolutely. We see spiritual curses, for example, when Adam fell, Adam and Eve. The tempting serpent was cursed. The Bible says he was cursed above livestock and animals, Genesis 3.14. The serpent bears the negative consequences of rebelling against God. Satan was cursed when he was kicked out of heaven. When Lucifer decided to overwhelm, he was cursed because he was separated from God for all eternity. The book of Numbers tells us when the king of Moab requested Balaam, a prophet, to come and curse Israel. Israel was God's people. Perhaps says, you know what, if you curse them, then I can defeat them. What did the prophet says? For I know that whatever you bless, or the, the Balaam said, whatever you bless and whatever you curse will be cursed, Numbers 22. But Balak is not seeking a verbal curse. That general was seeking a spiritual curse over the God's people. And Balak believes that Balaam can attack. And therefore, they thought he could go to a spiritual authority, put a curse on a church or a curse on Israel, and Israel would be defeated. But Balaam knows the truth. The power of the curse lies not in his ability, in his title as a prophet. Balaam says in Numbers 21, 38, I cannot say whatever I please. I must speak only what God puts in my mouth. See, that prophet understood that you cannot curse the God's people. Cursing and blessings lie under God's authority. Balaam can only speak and we can only speak what God says. Not only does God hinder Balaam, he stops him. He tells him, you cannot do this. And when the devil starts coming against you, you've got the word of God that tells you they cannot come against you. They cannot accomplish their evil ways. They cannot curse your home, the land. They cannot curse the things that you have. Matter of fact, last night when I was talking to... Uh, the McNeils, and we prayed that his bus wouldn't break. And he looked at me kind of strange. I says, why not? God gave it to you, right? You know, I remember Dave, uh, I mean, uh, Michael Fletcher at Manor Church. They had nine kids. And he told me one day, he says, you know one of the first things that we pray every morning? I says, what's that? I'm thinking about, you know, food and all that. He says, we pray that the washing machine and dryer doesn't break. Can you imagine nine kids? Laura says that that washer and dryer runs every day of the week. And I said, so how's it going? Fifteen years, washer and dryer ain't broke. Is it wrong? No. You know, I come in from walking. Every time I walk into the, into the garage, I touch my truck. I say, thank you, Lord, for my truck. Thank you, Lord, for my house. I'm thankful for what the God has given me. And the devil is not going to try to curse it and break it. People of God of Israel was protected against spiritual curses. The truth about curses is that it resides under the authority of God. So if you're saying that you are cursed with an evil and you're a Christian, what you're saying is God has cursed you with evil. Can God curse you with evil? No. What you need to find out is what storm are you in? And many people don't understand what the storm they're traveling under. If you remember, there's two major storms that in, in Bible it tells us the one, remember when the disciples were crossing the Sea of Galilee and the storm came and Jesus was sleeping and the disciples got all scared and woke up Jesus? Hey man, don't you care about us? Come on. And Jesus goes, looks into the storm and sees the devil and says, be quiet. What happened to the storm? Calm. So is Jesus sleeping in your boat right now? Wake him up. Call on him. 
the second storm was with Jonah. Remember when Jonah was running from God? He got on a boat, and the storm came, and he got thrown overboard, got swallowed by a big fish, a fish. Can you imagine that experience? And that storm, God was in it. So when you're going through a storm, what you need to figure out, what storm are you in? If it's God, repent. Or get thrown into the, into the river or ocean, get swallowed by a big fish, and then get spewed out. You know what spewing out means? Vomit. Wouldn't that be a great experience? Ah, oh, it feels good. But what is that? But you see, you may be going through a storm. You just got to figure out what storm you're going through. Is it the devil? Then wake up Jesus in your heart. If it's God, repent. And he'll put you on the path that he wants you on. The second one is you need to listen to God. Curses do not come against God's people. Curses are given for those that do not believe in God. Does God curse his people? Absolutely not. God, Christ, became a curse for us. He doesn't curse his church. But I will tell you something. You are cursed if you're not under the blood. You are cursed and you're going to burn for eternity. There's no nice way around it. There's two destinations. One of those that follow Jesus Christ and is covered by his blood and you'll go to heaven. The other one is an open road. Bring whatever you want to. You know, marry your dog if you want to. Matter of fact, they're marrying cats now. And matter of fact, in, in uh, California, a judge just ruled that a bumblebee can be classified as a bird. Or as a fish, I'm sorry, as a fish. They're under a mental curse. Just like that one congressman says, well, we all know that men can get pregnant. But you think it's just being dumb? No. When you're under the evil curse, your mind and your vision is, is, is distorted. A curse of God is never directed against God's people because we have victory with Jesus Christ over every curse that the enemy has put against us. Jesus said, there is nothing that my blood cannot cover. There's not an attack that the blood of Jesus cannot conquer. But the thing is, is we've got to submit. Now, what are you submitting to? Are you submitting to the promises of Christ at the cross? Or are you submitting to the evil one of life, of, of whatever you want? I just read the other day that for years, the King James Bible that's been around for almost 1,800 years, I mean, just no problem with that translation. Now, Christians are finding translations that fit their theological thoughts. I will tell you something. If your theology is different than what is written in the original, in the writings of God's Word, not the perverted versions that people come up with, but the original writings, then you are putting yourself under, you're submitting to the world. Submit to God. And if you submit to Him, He will protect you. Christians need to realize there is a spiritual force out there that we have to deal with. And we can only deal with it through the blood of Christ. In Christ we have been rescued from the dominion of darkness and brought into the kingdom of the sons of God. Colossians 1.13 Christians are removed from very dominion in which the spiritual curses take place. My dad, when he was in Brazil, 
missionary. A church member came to him and says, you need to come to my house. My wife is possessed with the devil. And my dad's story was he woke up about three o'clock in the morning and looked at my mom and says, Jenny, I'll be back in a few minutes. I got to go pray with these guys. You know how it is. We just got to do this religious thing. And he said he walked into that house with his Bible, opened it up. And my dad says that Bible went into the air and shattered. He's very calmly walked out, went back home and said, Jenny, you got to get up. Well, what happened? We need to pray. And we need the covering of the Holy Spirit. Then he prayed and went in there. He says, walked into the house, says, I have the authority of the blood of Jesus. And that was it. The lady was fine. The next Sunday they came forward, accepted Christ, was baptized. And he ended up becoming an elder of the church. But see, when my dad went there religiously, he had already failed. But when he went there recognizing that he was covered by the blood, recognizing that he had the power of the Holy Spirit, he didn't have to do anything. He walked in, prayed, it was done, she was clean, the house was done, there was no big Word said, he just said when he walked in the house, I'm coming in with the power of the word of God and the blood of Jesus. And walked in the house, and that was the end of it. The house was cleansed. There was no big ceremony. Because you see, the devil can't stand the blood of Christ. He can't, he can't come near it. He can't cross the bloodline. Christ's victory on the cross makes all the difference. Christ lived, and we need to live under the victory that Christ brought. We need to understand that Christ is the purpose. To be cursed under a spiritual influence is admitting that devil has more power in your life than God does. But now, are you doing something? Are you in a storm? Find out. If you're sitting there cursing your fathers, your mothers, you're cursing your, your loved ones, you're cursing your children, and you're bringing darkness, and you are rebelling against God, maybe the storm you're in is God trying to wake you up. But maybe you're running from God. Maybe you don't want to go to Bible study. I don't want to do nothing. I don't want to be part of a church. I don't want to do anything. And then the storm comes. Maybe God is trying to wake you up and says, you need to get back. The one who is in you is greater than the one that's in the world. We know that. 1 John 4, 4. Jesus bore the curse for on us. Jesus bore the curse for us. He became a curse. Deuteronomy 21, 22 says, anyone who's hung on a tree is under a curse. That's why Jesus had to hang on a tree, hang on the cross, because he had to become that curse so that he would have victory in your life and in mine. I need that Jesus that was willing to become the curse so that I am and my family, my grandchildren, and my church can no longer fall under the dominion of darkness. We have the victory. Paul points it out. Christ redeemed us from the curse by the, of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who's hung on a tree. New Testament. Although Jesus was sinless by nature, he still went to the cross and became a curse for us. When we say that we are cursed, we're saying that Jesus dying on the cross is insufficient. We're saying that it's not worthy. I heard a thing on TV the other day that there's going to be another Christ coming because the Christ that came 2,000 years ago failed when he came because he died on the cross. I'm sitting there going, that was the purpose of him coming. 
If he didn't die on the cross, guess what we would be? We would be lost, exactly. We would still be under a curse. But you see, the devil is trying to tell you that that was a failure when actually that was the victory. And sometimes we feel that we've lost something and actually it's a victory. I was going to put up here, you know, what is a loss and what is a victory? How do you identify a victory versus a loss? If you lose a friend, that's nothing but, nothing but trouble, nothing that brings you down, always bringing you into trouble, always getting you to do things that you know is wrong, and you lose that friend. Is that a loss or a victory? That's a victory. When you find a good relationship with Christ, when you find a good relationship with the Lord, and you find people that's going to direct to you, not to make you feel good, but that's going to tell you the truth of the Word of God so that one day when you get to heaven, you get this crown and you get this reward and you end up walking the streets of gold. I would rather, be, I would rather lose a friend on earth and gain a friend in heaven than have a friend on earth and lose him in hell. I would rather that the curse be broken. Deuteronomy 28. If you have a chance, you will read it. I'm, I'm just going to come. I'm going to highlight it. First of all, verses one through fourteen are blessings. Verses. 15 to 68 are curses. 53 verses of curses. So, look what it says. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all the commandments which I commanded you today, that the Lord God will set you high above the nations of the earth, and all the blessings shall come upon you and will overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. There's a condition. You have to obey the words of God. You cannot say, I believe in Jesus, but I love homosexuality. I believe in Jesus, but I love killing babies. You cannot say that. I had a young lady ask me, says, how do you deal with this friend of mine that loves Jesus, but she's also, she loves, she's also a lesbian? And, but she really loves Jesus. And I said, well, how would you feel if a 60-year-old man that really loves Jesus but likes, pet likes little kids, three, four-year-olds? She says, that's disgusting. I says, why? Well, the Bible says that's disgusting. I said, what does the Bible say about homosexuality? Sorry to say, she never came back. Why? Because she's wanting to hear what she wanted to hear. She did not want to hear the truth. Look at this. Blessed are you in the city. Blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall you the fruit of your body. Blessed shall your basket and your meal be. Blessed shall you be when you come in. Blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies to rise against you and fall. The Lord will command the blessings on you and your storehouses. The Lord will establish all the holy people to himself just as he has sworn to you if you keep the commandments of the Lord, your God. But then drop down to 15. But if you... but. It shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully his commandments and his statutes, which I commanded you today, that I shall curse will come upon you and overtake you. What is the contrary between verse 1 and verse 15? 
And then it's cursed shall you be in your baskets. Cursed shall you be in your city. Cursed shall you be of your fruit. Cursed shall you be in coming and going. The Lord will send cursing and confusion and rebuke into your mind. The cursing of mental illness will come into you. The Lord will come and make a plague and cling to you. I will strike you with, with consumption, with fevers, with boils, the severe burning. I will, the Lord will change the rain of your land to powder and dust. That The Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. The Lord will strike you with boils of Egypt and tumor, tumors. You cannot be healed. The Lord will strike you with madness. It's madness. When you tell you somebody that you know, everybody knows that a man can get pregnant. That's madness. And it continues down to verse 58. If you do not carefully observe all the words of this law, which are written in this book, that you may fear the glorious and awesome name, the Lord your God, then the Lord will bring upon you and your descendants extraordinary plagues, great and prolonged plagues, and serious and prolonged sickness. Moreover, He will bring back on you the diseases of Egypt. How can you take these curses? One, disobey His Word. And I'm going to tell you something. You cannot be a cafeteria Christian. Anybody know what a cafeteria Christian is? Have you ever been to a cafeteria? You pick what you like. You know, in my case, God opens up the Bible and says, here's a bowl of lima beans. <laughs> Lord, I don't want that. You need this. Means I have to sometimes take in something that I don't like. There's things in there that, you know what, you're just going to have to do. You're going to have to give up something. And maybe I need the vitamins. But I do know that when Eve cursed the fruit that she ate of was lima beans. That's why we don't eat lima beans in our home. John 15, 9 through 17. I am the true vine, and my father is the wine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Do you get that? I am the true vine. We have to produce fruit. You cannot be a Sunday morning pew sitter. If you truly believe that Jesus left heaven, left glory to come to this earth, and, and think about it, when he came here, about 1 or 2 B.C. I mean, if I was Jesus, if I had to come to earth, I'd come today, man, where I could come down and I'd land in Nazareth and I'd get me my nice Ford pickup truck and I'd drive to, to, to Canaan and, and I'd have a speedboat to get across the uh, Sea of Galilee and, you know what, and it got hot, I'd have air conditioning. But he came when, the, you know what, there was no paved roads. His mother had to ride a donkey from Nazareth to Bethlehem. I was there. I know those that came with, went to Israel with us. That, that had to be a terrible trip. I remember my wife, when she was pregnant, she complained about the car ride. Can you imagine having to put her on a donkey? So my word to you today is you decide. Do you want a blessing or do you want to be cursed? If you want the blessing, then you need to sell yourself completely to the word of God. You need to be completely emerged in what the word of God teaches you. From Genesis to Revelations. You need to believe and trust in him. Or... Live in the world. 
accept, the, accept what Facebook tells you is okay. Or what Google tells you. You know, people will trust Google before they trust the written word. I've read the words of people, and they pull out their phone. What's well, the first thing they do? They hit Google, and they're going to see what Google says. Well, ah, this is what this says. The world versus the word of God. Your choice. Salvation with blessings. Cursings with damnation. This is what thing about our God. You know, the Holy Spirit, he's a gentleman. He doesn't possess you. He doesn't take over you. He doesn't force himself on you. He knocks on your heart and asks you, will you let me in? Will you allow me to bless you? Will you allow me to bless your children? If you do, all you have to do is follow my lead. The devil destroys. The Holy Spirit builds. I'm going to close. Is there anybody in here? And I said this last night. If you die today, if you died right now, do you know that you'll go to heaven? You should know that. Next Sunday, we're going to have a baptism. And is there anybody in here that has not been baptized that would like to be baptized? Please talk to me. The Bible says that we come, we accept Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, and be baptized. The inward change with an outward expression. I've heard many times people tell me, well, I want to be baptized in private. Why? Well, I don't want people to look at me. I don't do secret baptisms. Baptisms are public. It's a public confession of your faith. Just like walking down the aisle. It's a public confession of your faith. And if you're afraid, what the the Bible says, if you deny me to the world, I'll deny you in front of the Father. Don't deny Christ. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you. Touch us in a mighty way. Lord, we know we're blessed. Lord, we claim your blessings right now, and everyone is hearing my voice. Lord, I claim it in the name of Jesus, Lord. I break every curse, and I break every attack that the enemy has done. Lord, we have the victory in the blood of Christ. We have the victory by the cross, and we will walk with our heads up. We will walk and we'll claim the authority that we have in our city. This is our home, and the devil has no place here. We claim your name. We claim the blood of Jesus on the streets of in the on our schools and on our children, Lord. We are set free from the spirit of darkness. We claim the authority that you have given us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.